الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد So the topic in hand is the importance of bay'ah number one and the proof of this in terms of whether if it is uh, something that is been approved by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does our sharia, does our uh, Islam allow this so I'm going to try my best inshallah to prove this and uh, for some of us it may be something very logical and we might have to use a, a little bit of our brain inshallah so just bear with me so of course the first first thing is first and that is uh, why do you need a mentor right a question can pop and arise over here that what's the importance of the mentor right um, can I not just not achieve all of these levels of spirituality myself and the answer is no you cannot right it's that easy anything in life that you want to achieve and gain there has to be some sort of a mentor to get you to lead you to that place to get you there whether if it is a sports whether if it is becoming the wealthiest person in this world, whatever you need to succeed in this world, you need some sort of mentorship. And that's why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He says that be amongst those who are the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Fatiha, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what sirat al ladina We ask Him, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path. And what is that a straight path, Ya Allah? Is the path of those an'amta alayhim, those whom you have bestowed your favors upon. And in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He explains who are those people whom Allah ta'ala has bestowed His favors upon. Min al nabiyyin wa siddiqeen wa shuhada wa salihin. These are the people, the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anbiya, nabiyyin, siddiqeen, the truthful ones. وَالشُّهَدَاء The ones who died and martyred in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and وَالصَّالِحِينَ The righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So when we ask Allah ta'ala to guide us to that straight path Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to attach ourselves with those individuals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about whom Allah has already guided to that path right? Because we ourselves cannot guide ourselves to that path We need somebody to take us there And who is that? That is amongst those four people, in that category of those four people. And of course, one of them is what? Salihin, the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we ask Allah ta'ala to guide us and to take us there, to lead us there, we're actually asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us an individual who can actually help us and aid us and assist us to take us to that righteous path, to that straight path of yours. So that is why when we come here and when we listen to these speeches, we try to understand and acknowledge the importance of this, you know, the, 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 this, this environment that we are in, that why are we here? What's the, what's, the, what's the reason behind it and what's the goal behind it? The goal behind it is so that each and every single one of us can be guided to that straight path. Each and every single one of us can be led to that straight path. And for that you need a mentor. For that you need somebody, right? Now when we come to the fact that has this, the, the, this term of bay'ah that we hear over and over. And the meaning of bay'ah, the literal meaning of it, I'm going to get into both meanings. The literal meaning of it and the shar'a and the salah and meaning of it as well. That what does it mean in the linguistic meaning of sharia? What does, what does it mean? The literal meaning of bay'ah is to make a promise. So I make a promise with you and that is known as bay'ah. I make a promise with you that I am never going to, you know, hurt you again. I'm never going to, you know, steal from you again. That's a promise, general promise. When we talk about in sharia, in Islam, when we say bay'ah, what does it mean? It means that you take a promise from a group of people, from people that they are going to abide by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what it means. That when, of course, the shaykh, you come to him and you say, hey, I want to get bay'ah. You know, I want to do bay'ah. What does it mean? You're actually telling him that I want to obey the laws of Islam, number one, and I want to obey the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the meaning of bay'ah. Now, has this been proven in Islam? Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do this? Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam take bay'ah from Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'een? There were four types of bay'ah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had done in his life. The first bay'ah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had done 
was bay'atul islam bay'atul islam meant was when a sahaba when a person came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said ya nabi allah i want to come into the fold of islam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would take a promise from him and that promise was what you're going to accept the fold of islam and never going to turn back to kufr you won't ever go back to kufr so he would say, yes, Ya Nabi Allah. That was the first bay'ah that the Prophet ﷺ would take, number one. Number two was bay'atul hijrah. Hijrah is migration. When the Prophet ﷺ would tell his companions to migrate, it was for that purpose. The Prophet ﷺ would take a promise from them and they would do so. The third one is bay'atul jihad. And this was from time to time the Prophet ﷺ would take this in different, different battles. Where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would tell the Sahaba that you are going to stay in the battlefield. You're not going to run away. Your life depends upon it. And even if you have to sacrifice your life, you're going to give up your life. And this was something so great, the Prophet ﷺ, when he would take this bay'ah from the Sahaba Ajma'in, in one instance, when the Sahaba actually did do bay'ah, bay'atul jihad, and uh, they were actually singing a poem, and that poem was, نَحْنُ الَّذِينَ بَيَعُوا مُحَمَّدَ عَلَى الْجِهَادِ مَا بَقِيْنَا أَبَدًا That we are the ones who have promised the Prophet وسلم, upon for our lives. That we're going to stay in this battlefield no matter what. We're, never, we're not going to flee and run away from this battlefield. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved it so much, this action of bay'ah when the Prophet ﷺ took from his companions. That in the uh, ayah, in one of the ayahs of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ That in reality, when they were actually taking this bay'ah, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, No, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ الله. Indeed, in reality, they are doing bay'ah with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They're making a promise with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And when they were shaking the hand of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ Their hand, the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is upon their hands. Right? Because they showed their, 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 their enthusiasm, and their, they showed their zeal that they are not going to run away from the battlefield. So this was the third type of bay'ah. The fourth one, which the Prophet ﷺ would take from time to time as well, and that is the bay'ah to tawbah. Bay'ah to tawbah means that uh, the laws and the regulations in Islam, I am going to follow them 100%. And if for some reason I may slip, I'm going to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm going to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this has been, been proven through Quran and through the Sahih authentic narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In one narration mentioned in Sahihain, Bukhari and Muslim. The narration is mentioned by Ubad ibn Samit radiallahu anhu where he says that there was a group of companions around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the reason why I'm mentioning this right is because there's a lot of misconception out there that uh, a lot of times you hear people, there's two groups. A, one group of people, they say that, oh, you know, this is something totally baseless. It doesn't have anything to do in Islam. And you have another group that is so dived into it, they give it the, you know, the, the, the level of fara'id, of farida, and obligation, and then they totally negate every other obligation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have this sort of, you know, it's either 100% or nothing, unfortunately. And many a times we experience that people, they make this question, you know, they build up this question that has this been proven through Islam? What is this bay'ah? Why do I have to go to a person and, you know, submit myself to that person and under that person so that he can guide me? Why can it not just be me, myself, right? No, the Prophet ﷺ, it shows us, and this hadith will show us, mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim, where Ubadat ibn Samit says that a group of Sahaba was around him. And the Prophet ﷺ, he took bay'ah from them. And what was the bay'ah for? It wasn't for bay'atul Islam. It wasn't for bay'atul Hijrah. It wasn't for bay'atul Jihad. It was for what reason? For what purpose? In the narration, he mentions, "Ala alla tushriku billahi shay'a, wala tasriku, wala tazinu." Right? That you are not going to associate any partners with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Number one. Number two, you are not going to steal ever again in your life. You're not going to commit adultery. You're not going to commit any of the kabair, the major sins in Islam. And if for some reason you may slip and you may do any of these acts that, are, that have been prohibited in Islam, you come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask Allah ta'ala for repentance. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the narration he mentions as well that if you were to do these kaba'ir, fa'uqiba fi dunya and you are to be penalized in this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes you in the dunya, that, that will be your kuffara. Right? That will be basically that you have been, you, you've paid the, 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 the dues for that sin that you had committed. 
And then if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered that sin upon you, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not penalized you for it as well, then it is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah, in anhu, in adhabahu, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, He may forgive you, or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, He may punish you on the day of Qiyamah. So Ubadah ibn Samit radiallahu anhu says, we were around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim, that the Sahaba were there. The Sahaba are already Muslim. They are not taking bay'ah upon hijrah or upon jihad. No, they are taking bay'ah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon the mere fact that they are not going to commit any of the kabair major sins in Islam. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this, they said, Ya Nabi Allah, we are going to do bay'ah. They did bay'ah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is one proof. Another proof in Surah Al-Mamdahina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and again, not just for the male, the female as well. In that ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nabiyu, idha jaaka al-mu'minat, yubaya'anaka ala alla yushrikna billahi shay'a, wala yasriqna, wala yaznina, wala yaqtulna uladahun. There's a whole category, there's a whole list, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if the mu'minat, the, the, the believing women, were they come, if they were to come to you, to take bay'a, Ya Nabi Allah, if they're going to come to take bay'a from you, upon what? That they're not going to steal, they're not going to commit adultery, they're, they're not going to associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So take their bay'ah, take their promise, Allah, and seek for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness for them. So we have these proofs in Islam in Sharia. This is not something that we have made up or has been made up. No, it has been proven through Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is just that very unfortunate people don't really understand this factor. Um, and again, as it has been mentioned over and over and over again, right? One of the ways to take you out of the fold of Islam is what? Very easy. Is to basically work on your heart. And nowadays in this day and age, the entire world is working upon our hearts. The entire world is working upon our hearts. Right? Whether it may be our cell phones, whether it may be the social media that we're involved in, the friends we're around. Each and every single thing is working upon our hearts. And when that heart is now destroyed, now what happens? A person easily leaves the fold of Islam. It happens very often. Now how do you protect that? How do you save that? How do you save yourself from that and your kids from that? Is to work upon that heart. And this is the reality of it. That Alhamdulillah, in this day and age, we have such a blessed gathering, right? Where every single month we come in and we check in. That how is our spirituality? One month passed so quick, right? Last month we were here, now again we're here. Now we ask ourselves, that where is that, where is that a spirituality that I was looking for? Have I gained anything, yes or no? So this is that workshop that we are here for. It is not something that we've made up again. It is something that has been proven through Islam, through Quran, through the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is just that we have to value it and we have to take that a step forward so that we can work upon our heart, save our iman and the iman of our progeny. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the ability to do so, inshaAllah.